For defense against air-to-air -air or surface-to-air guided missiles, military aircraft deploy countermeasures known as chaffs and flares. They are intended to deceive the guided missile seekers, thus diverting the missiles from the actual target. The Swiss Air Force uses various types of chaffs and flares for both fighter jets and helicopters. They are not just used as defenses, but also as a visual signal in air policing operations. Flares are classed as auxiliary munitions. For transport, they're part of the Hazard Class 1.3, objects with a high risk of fire, but no risk of explosion. According to these transport classifications, an accident should not result in a shock wave or cause shrapnel. So far, there has been no scientific investigation into what could happen if a flare within a large stockpile were to ignite in an enclosed space. It is unclear whether the narrow confines of a munitions box would be enough for a fire to cause an explosion. It is high time we had some answers to these questions. The General Secretariat is responsible for safety management at the DDPS and issues directives and instructions on protection and safety when handling ammunition and explosives in military operations. The statutory responsibility means that the GS is required to keep the information it uses when deciding on its directives and instructions up to date with the latest technological advances. In this project, the Armour Swiss Competence Sector for Science and Technology, working with specialists from the private sector, is conducting a scientific study of how a fire caused by flares spreads under real munitions depot conditions, as may occur in munitions boxes on military air bases. Luckily, the scientists can use five old ammunition boxes for the experiment. They are being removed from the Emmen Air Base as part of a new construction project. Transporting the boxes, which weigh over 20 tons, to the Hinterrhein tank firing range is a logistical challenge. However, the challenge is easily met with the help of military hardware and specialists. The flares themselves can also be obsolete material. The decoys used in the experiment have reached the end of their lifespan and would otherwise be disposed of. In early September 2017, preliminary experiments are carried out in the Hondrich Detonation Laboratory, close to Spiertz. During the tests, the Armour Swiss S&T specialists work out how to measure the extent of a possible explosion. They estimate the mass reactivity and determine the key values for work safety measures for handling flares safely. In the Hondrich Detonation Laboratory, which is located in a decommissioned artillery fortress, Fully instrumented experiments with explosive loads of up to 15 kilograms QTNT can be carried out. By mid-November 2017, the ammunition boxes from Emmen are ready for the main experiment at the Hinterrhein tank firing range. As far as we know, this type of experiment has never been done before. So when preparing for the experiment, it was important to estimate the maximum outcome of each experiment in order to decide what safety measures are required. Specifically, this means protecting our own personnel and the surroundings. Ultimately, we had to set up an experiment plan in order to gather as much data as possible without damaging our technical infrastructure. 
In temperatures of around minus 10 degrees Celsius and in strong winds, the team prepares for the experiments. They fill the munitions boxes with one, three or even four pallets of flares. An electrical ignition pill is attached to a single flare for each test. At the same time, the measuring technology is set up. The temperature and pressure sensors will provide important data for evaluation. The team also sets up a number of high-definition video and high-speed cameras. Their pictures will be transmitted live to the control center and will also be recorded for later evaluation. The control center has been set up in the well-protected observation bunker, situated around 200 meters away. Before the flares can be ignited, all the connections and settings for the measuring technology need to be checked individually. Achtung, drei, zwei, eins, zündig. The team anxiously follows developments on the test site via the monitors. Now they will see whether the reaction of the burning flares changes, whether the ammunition box breaks up, whether debris is propelled into the surrounding area, or whether the heat transmitted to the adjacent boxes is enough to ignite the flares inside them. Our initial findings show that the flares reacted as we expected them to. There was no flying debris and we can rule out spread to the neighboring box. For safety reasons, the team must wait several hours before they can access the test site and take a first close look at the ammunition boxes. After three days, the fire spread experiments at the Hinterrhein tank firing range are complete. It will be some time, however, before all the data that has been gathered is analyzed and the team can produce detailed results. The findings will later be used to set guidelines and directives for protection and safety when dealing with ammunition and explosives in the armed forces.